Victor, working with feminists. Oh, um, I have to say, I've been lumbered with this before, and the best thing is just not engage with them. The, the thing is, they're looking for a rise or want to have a jab. It, it's, um, I remember, um, uh, well, I can't, I'm trying to remember his name off the top of my head now. It's, I'm, it'll come to me in a minute. Um, but as he said, when he was coming across some of the stuff that some of the female colleagues would do in the office, he would actually just turn around and say, I'm not your husband. Don't talk to me like I'm your husband. Because of some of the petty stuff they would come out with or being asked to do a task and they didn't like it. You know, it's very pathetic. You know, it's sort of like, oh, can you say please and all this sort of stuff. It's like, get a job, you know, just get on with it. Um, but you will get it. I mean, I've seen in the NHS where you get people that, A, like to stir the pot, but when you kick it back, they'll go and report you and actually then um, make a big issue of it. And that the whole point being is, I know it sounds a bit childish, but they started it in the first place. But they like to create issues, but do not like um, having things pushed back. Um, it's like when people ask me about donating to charities and stuff in the workplace, I'll say it's not for me and it's not, it's not something I agree with in the workplace. Because people are boxed in, you know, you don't have a choice. It's not like you're you're walking down the street and you just walk past the guy with a tin. They they'll have coffee mornings and stuff. That quite simply, it's like oh, it's for this. And I'm like, I don't do charities. Yeah, but we everybody's got no. Not everybody has to do it at all. It's not a company issue. Um, but this is part and parcel. A lot of this stuff is false engagements, where it's sort of disguised as one thing but another. And this is why it sort of overlaps into the feminist thing because they have something that they they support, you know, whether it's um, pony club or whatever it is. The the whole point is they have very specific things that they support for themselves and expect others to get involved in. In social housing, it used to be a lot around um, specific people with issues. At the same time, it's not my problem. Um, you get them trying to force things to suit their own agenda and ultimately although they see themselves as being empowered by doing this in a very abusive and aggressive way what you need to understand is is understand where you sit and in most cases you're quite within your right to say don't you raise your voice leave my office you're you know put in an email and I'll get back to you Whatever it is, you don't have to engage with them too much. And when they, when you get the ones that do these, I can't even call them jokes because they're not funny. He's, he's just trying to have a jab at men sort of thing. My personal view is I don't even acknowledge they've even spoken. Um, I just walk past them, you know, completely blank them. Because um, I can't be bothered with it. You know, at the end of the day, it's pathetic. And yet, at the same time, they seem to think that it's okay to do this stuff, but if you do did it from the other perspective, they would hate it. They would actually go crying to the boss, Matt did this, Matt did that. Hey, yeah. So personally, I just wouldn't engage with them. I'd avoid them where you can. If we don't have to engage with them, don't. Um, I wouldn't say systematically try and do something destructive with them. I'd just say cover your bases all the time. I've seen people get in trouble for stuff that was not their fault, but simply because somebody had an issue with them, which is sometimes why I've ended up there, because I've had to replace somebody else that's now dealing with the effects of somebody uh, filing a complaint or an inquiry or whatever, and yet they hadn't done anything in the first place. When you're in those sort of situations, always make sure you cover your bases. Don't be caught alone with them. Don't be in a position where they can use anything against you. Um, do not let them befriend you. Keep it all professional. You know, at the end of the day, the, the, this is a funny thing recently. Um, I was asked for some references relating to a contract in the UK. And a lot of the guys I worked with previously, their LinkedIn's have gone because they're now retired. And they've disconnected themselves completely from their history. Um, for example, 
all the mobile phones and the emails were company. So we don't use personal emails. So the point is, they basically disappeared. And that's the way you want to keep things. Just keep it 100% professional. There's no reason for you to engage with somebody outside of work. There's no reason for you to engage with them on a personal basis. If they have a problem, because some people do this thing where they, oh, I need to talk to you about this or whatever. Say, you need to speak to somebody um, at a higher position because I uh, have not been trained in this. And that's, that's the crap I ever come out with. It's quite simply, not interested, not my problem, and it's not me being selfish or whatever, it's quite simply, I know sometimes they're just trying to box you in for something else, and it's just not worth the time. It just isn't. You know, at the end of the day, I know that you guys are, probably in the last 10 years of your work life or whatever, and you don't need the hassle. So delegate everything where you can. Don't get caught in it, don't get baited into it. Sideline side it, move it. Um, and always try to be around other people when, the other, when they're there. Because that way you've always got somebody that's a witness to anything that goes on. That's all I can advise on that. Thanks for watching.